Hi, I'm Jack Shilley and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I've got some planter containers um, that I want to freshen up at home. And I therefore thought I'll share with you some of my top picks for seasonal bedding plants that I'm using to add some colour to my pots. Um, they're also great for hanging baskets, um, beds and borders if you've also got those at home. How I ensure they always look their best and that I get the most flowers out of them. All of these plants are readily available from garden centres at this time of year and they are all super easy to look after which I'll touch on one by one um, because some of them have a few extra specifics to ensure as I said that they look their best all the time. My first plant that I love to use at this time of year is the primrose. Quite a common garden plant you have also got the perennial ones which tend to be more sort of yellows and smaller you find them naturalized in woodland but these are the bedding types they're a lot bigger and they tend to have these huge showy flowers right in the center of this lush green foliage now uh, primroses are super easy to look after they start flowering in the winter sort of december time you'll start to find them in the garden centers and then they carry on going right the way through until at least may june and potentially beyond if you're good on your watering now with primroses, the trick is that you need to keep them deadheaded. That is just removing any faded or tired flowers from the plant. This encourages lots more blooms. And what I also recommend with primroses is that you regularly check underneath the leaves to see if there are any that are yellow, that are dying and are damaged, and to pull those off. That encourages more leaf growth and it also means that there's no chance for the leaves and foliage to rot underneath the plant. Make sure you feed them uh, because that again will encourage lots of growth and lots of flowers. But a very good all-rounder, nice and compact, small, low growing, so perfect for tubs and baskets. One thing that I will also add about the primroses is they like good airflow and air circulation. So growing them in a greenhouse, for example, won't be so ideal unless it's well ventilated um, because they can be susceptible to things like botrytis, which is grey mould. So do check for that regularly um, and make sure you give them nice, adequate space if you're planting them in beds and borders or pots and baskets, um, because that can be quite detrimental to the plant's appearance and how much they flower for you. Next up on my list is ranunculus. Now ranunculus is a little bit of a lesser known bedding plant, I think, um, but I really love them. They have these beautiful large flowers and they come in a myriad of colours. This one is white particularly, um, but you can also get them in oranges, reds, pinks. Three ruffled, loads of petals in there, almost peony-like in appearance. A really, really stunning plant. And very easy to look after. The only thing to bear in mind with ranunculus is that they generally dislike being wet for long periods of time so they're more suited to a sheltered pot on a porch for example um, because when water and cold gets into the flowers if they are in full bloom um, it tends to damage the petals really easily otherwise as I said super easy to look after it is an annual so you'd want to discard them once the flowering is finished and then start with your summer bedding so they should last a uh, plentiful uh, with blooms until May, June, in which case your summer bedding will be ready by then. That's ranunculus. Then after ranunculus is I have dianthus, um, quite commonly known. Pinks are um, lovely compact plants, although you can get bigger herbaceous types as well. And they have beautiful kind of frilly edged flowers. This one is going to be purple. You can see my color scheme emerging here now, purples, whites, etc. But beautiful and easy to look after plants. You don't really have to do a lot with dianthus. They generally perform better when they are well fed. So do make sure that if you're planting lots of dianthus, you do have a good feeding routine in place. And again, they will just keep flowering so long as you're deadheading them and giving them a feed every couple of weeks. This particular variety um, is quite a tender variety. So um, if we do get a very hard frost, it might start to struggle a little bit, but you can also get hardy types, as I said, bigger types, herbaceous types, you can put in a mixed border, which are also lovely. Um, this one I, I'm gonna be using in my tubs and by the time it's kind of really finished flowering and it needs cutting back and a bit more TLC, my summer bedding is gonna be ready. So that's really ideal. And then for the center of my tubs, or if you're looking for something a bit bigger and a bit more substantial to fill a whole container, um, go for erysimums. I love erysimums. These are, wall, these are a type of wallflower and they are just absolutely gorgeous. They come in oranges, yellows, whites, creams, purples, as I've got here. Um, they're just fantastic plants and they're so free flowering. Once they start, they just keep going for months and months. 
Erythemums um, are, generally speaking, evergreen. Um, and if you're somewhere where we don't get particularly hard frost or lots of snow, you'd have really good success in keeping these going all year, to be quite honest, um, and subsequent years as well. One popular variety is called Erythemum bowls mauve. Um, you'll most likely see that in herbaceous borders. They get really big, they're full of purple flowers, and they have a light scent to them, and they are fully hardy. This particular variety uh, is called Winter Joy. It's more of an annual type, but as long as you give it enough space in a large container or you plant it in the ground, I think you'll have great success in keeping it going. As I said, this has got purple flowers. It flowers any time from around January, February, right the way through until oh, I don't know, June, July, really long flowering period on these. And the flowers on this one absolutely smell gorgeous. In this sunshine here in the greenhouse at the moment, the flowers just smell divine. Um, and I think scent in the garden is hugely important. So if you can factor some of these into your tubs and baskets, um, they'll all be better for it. What I tend to do with my erythemum to keep them in tip top condition is I'll let the first flush of flowers run their course. That'd be four or five weeks. Um, and then I tend to give them a bit of a haircut. So I prune them back to a leaf node um, where there's new shoots coming. That ensures that your erythemum stays nice and compact and doesn't get too leggy or woody, which can be a problem from time to time. I'm going to be using my erythemum in the centre of the containers because they are a bit bigger, a bit taller, and then you've put the primroses and dianthus around the bottom so you get a nice variation in height. But a really good all-rounder and great for adding um, a bit of interest to, as I say, herbaceous borders as well if you've got space for those. And last but no, by no means least um, are pansies and violas, arguably the most common garden plant. I think most people can identify pansies and violas. Um, they tend to come in six packs as I've got here from the local garden centre and they are available in any colour you like, yellows, oranges, reds, two tones, three tones, purples, pinks, all sorts. They're just fabulous. I tend to only grow pansies and violas personally uh, during the winter and spring months when it's cooler. They do tend to struggle a bit more in the heat. Um, they dry out very quickly. They can get tall, so they don't look great during the summer. But at this time of year, they look fantastic. Violas are the smaller variety, so they have smaller leaves. They're more compact plants. They have these beautiful, dainty, small flowers. Pansies um, are also, I think, equally beautiful, but they tend to be bigger plants and the flowers are much larger on those. So it's just personal preference, really. What you need to do with pansies and bear in mind is that, again, like with the primroses, they like uh, to be well ventilated. They like a bit of space and they don't like to be too warm or to dry out. So make sure that you put them outside. Don't try and grow them inside because you'll just run into all kinds of problems with mould and mildew on the leaves and things like that, which just detracts from the loveliness of the flowers. They are very easy flowering plants. So as long as you deadhead them, more and more flowers keep coming. If you wanted to have a grow growing your own pansies and violas, when they finish flowering, they have small round seed heads that appear. If you pick those off when they start to dry, squeeze them so the black seeds come out of the center, you can then plant them. It's a super quick and easy way to get your own and there's also um, a bit of variation in sowing seeds so they might not necessarily be the color or size of flower that you had on the plant that you took it from which is always I think a bit of a frill when you're planting seeds because you just don't know what they're going to come up as but again a great all-rounder low growing easy to look after and will just provide you with masses of blooms right the way through until as I say your summer bedding plants start to come ready later in the year so as I said I've got some potting up to do to get my containers and pots looking great um, I'd love to see what you're doing with your tubs, baskets and borders at this time of year in terms of adding a bit of colour. So um, all my social links are in the box below. Um, I'd love to see, as I said, some pictures or just let me know what you're doing in terms of your flowering seasonal bedding um, at this time of year. There's so much variety that people do and I see pictures when I'm at work and bits and pieces like that of what people have done and it's just um, it's just amazing to see it all and really inspiring actually. So I hope that's inspired you with a few choices that you can go out and do your own this weekend. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys come up with as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching as always. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I will see you soon in the next one. Thanks for watching.